the one million times more. Smai Shri Gurave Namaha. Shri Chaitanya Manobi Stamastakti Tanya Nabutale Swayam Rupa Tanayam Gadati Swam Padanti Kam. Sunday hung she got no Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Divinanta Swami Tina May Namaste Sir Swati Devi Gauravani Pacharine Near Visesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Vanchakopa to Rupis Chakra to Sinave, Vachata Titanam, Pavani, Bio Vaishnavi, Bio Namaha, Jayasi Krishna, Chaitanya Pramuna Kananda, Siadvaita Gadadhar, Shiva, Sadi Gaur, Bhakta Vrinda, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. If the devotees can turn on their videos, that would be nice. I'm not able to, to today because of my health, but you could turn on your video, please. Not, not the full screen, just the picture. You don't have to turn your video on because you're the host. So, um, in some parts of the world, yesterday we celebrated Ram Vijay Hotsava, but today in other parts, it's, a, it's also the day for celebration. This particular pastime of Lord Ramachandra, which is the culmination of the pastime of his appearance, Oh, almost the culmination of his pastime, his appearance in this world is one of the reasons why the Supreme Personality of Godhead appears in this world, and that is to remove irreligion from the world and to reestablish true religious principles. These irreligions are personified by personalities who simply give trouble to the devotees. Hmm. I just received an email just a few minutes before I started the program where our temple in Bangladesh, Chittagong was attacked by a gang of Muslims. And they, they did considerable damage to the temple. And uh, one brahmachari was severely injured and he is in ICU right now. And uh, so there's going to be a little bit of a response to that. I don't know how that's going to take hold, but um, the damage is quite severe. They destroyed most of the temple. Fortunately, only one person, we might say unfortunately one person, but was injured. So this, you'll see, this is Kali Yuga. There is so much influence from demoniac personalities who claim to be religious. They are not religious. They are simply demons in the guise of persons who uh, pro 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 propagate a particular type of religious tradition. They are actually an insult to the tradition. Not a disgrace, actually a disgrace to the tradition. But we see this goes on time and memorial. Prabhupada explains that there are two classes of men, the demons and the devotees. And these uh, two classes exist eternally. There are actually planets where their demoniac population is born, they're demons from the very birth, they are 
there are planets, lower planets, and some of them all around the earth also. Some of them are invisible planets of yakshas, rakshasas, kusmandas, jinns, various types of evil beings. They're not just some kind of imagination given by some children in some storybooks. They're actually real. These people, these uh, lower beings are very powerful in the sense that they cause disruption to the other living entities and to the earth itself. So the Lord, when these things get too severe, the Lord appears in his form. He has appeared now in the form of the holy name. But he appears sometimes in his personal form, which he did about two million years ago as Lord Ramachandra. And at that time, one particular demon, whose name was Ravana, had amassed a great fortune and built himself a kingdom in an island called Lanka, which is now known as Ceylon. And Ravana had quite a dynasty and quite a following, very powerful. Also, he also had mystic power and he was simply harassing other living entities. That's what the demons do. They simply harass others. That's their whole business, just to give trouble to others. And so the Lord came. Yadai yadai hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharatam abhutanam dharmasya dhatmaham srijami aham parityanayam sarunam vinastanaya chaduskritam dharma samstapanartaya sambhavami yuge yuge. So again, we request devotees to turn on your videos unless you absolutely cannot do it for whatever reason. Please turn on your videos. It's nice to see who I'm talking to <laughs> instead of a blank screen. Okay. So, um, this one powerful personality, he was the son of Vishrava. He had performed many austerities to get benedictions from Lord Brahma. Jesse had done in his previous incarnation as Tarani Kashi Pool. Now he reappears as Ravana and performs more austerities. You'll see in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talks about the demons and how they perform austerities in order to get material power and then using that material power to gain more wealth, more prestige, more followers and more material possessions. Uh, Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita that the demons have all bad qualities, lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride and envy. And they simply propagate these things as a way to further their material success. So in his Ravana, he, we see from the example of Ravana, out of all the qual disqualifications, or you might say the enemies, he was very lusty. Uh, this is a characteristic of a materialistic person. They, they cannot satisfy their lust no matter how much they have or how much they do. So lust is like an unlimited fire which burns. And the more you try to satisfy it, the more that fire will burn brighter. So Ravana he had amassed this huge golden city with thousands, actually millions, not thousands, hundreds of millions of followers. He was quite powerful. He had for many, many decades, he had 
amassed this and he was thinking he was invisible, invincible because he had received the benediction and he would not be killed by certain living entities. But fool, the pride of the of uh, uh, pride of Ravana is his downfall because he never asked for a benediction against the humans because he thought the humans are so insignificant that a human cannot do anything to the Rakshasha race. Actually, the human race is inferior to the Rakshasha race. And so and he was felt that would be an insult. But the Lord, knowing he appeared as a human being in order to, you know, destroy this demon. So the battle went on for 10 days. The reason for the battle was, you'll see the analogy that the, the demons, they want to take material possessions or wealth. Wealth sometimes is given the name Lakshmi. Actually, Lakshmi is the goddess of fortune. And she is also the goddess of wealth, real wealth, not this paper money that we call wealth. That's not wealth, that's just paper. That's all it is. Real wealth is gold, silver, precious metals. As far as exchange wealth, these are the foundations for real wealth and emeralds, jewelry, diamonds, lapis lazuli, sapphires, so many beautiful types of stones, which are not only valuable, but they're also auspicious. So he had amassed such a great fortune. But, and we understand that lust takes its form of wanting to enjoy the senses as much as possible. And so in trying to enjoy his senses more and more, he happened to kidnap the uh, internal energy of Lord Narayan, the goddess of fortune, Sita Devi herself. Now, when that happened, that inspired the Lord to finish off Ravana and his entire empire. And so you'll see the battle lasted for 10 days and it's a really intense battle um, where Lakshman and the monkey soldiers who were recruited by uh, Ram to assist him um, were also numerous. There were like millions and millions and millions of monkey soldiers. <laughs> Prabhupada gives a nice analogy of our ISKCON society. He says that you no, know, Prabhupada came from India. And so he had to cross the ocean. And, and in crossing the ocean, he came to take back the goddess of fortune that was stolen by the materialists. And he came to the United States of America or the disunited States of America. I think that's probably more definitive. And um, when he got there, he found some monkey soldiers and that was his disciples. And so Prabhupada would use that analogy and then I crossed the ocean, I found some monkey soldiers and now we are in the process of taking back the stolen wealth that belongs to the Supreme Personality of Godhead from the hands of the demoniac population who are simply destroying themselves as they amass more and more wealth and 
engage in more and more sinful activities. So the battle was quite intense. In fact, you'll see it was Hanuman himself who crossed over the ocean to find Sita Devi. And his crossing over the ocean is quite interesting. Actually, in about six days or five days, no, I'm sorry, that's that's in, I'm sorry, that's that's incorrect. Um, the appearance of Hanuman comes five or six days right after the appearance of Lord Ramchandra. But this is the Vijay Dasam, Dasami, which is the victory over good over evil. There's an old saying, it's not an old saying, it's a saying that the Christians say that time and truth go hand in hand. So what that means is that in due course of time, truth will prevail. Right now you see in the world, we are in a very dark time where demoniac population is increasing and people are becoming more and more exploited and victimized by the demons who are in various positions within the political, social, and even ecclesiastical uh, places within the world. Um, And so um, the battle was intense. And Ravana, he thought it would be easy to conquer over these two human beings plus a group of monkeys, but he was in for a surprise. So every as the battle was going on, more and more of his, his, his sons, uh, cousins, who were also generals and army personnel were being destroyed by Ram and Lakshman and the monkey army. And he kept sending more and more of his more powerful generals out there and they were also being killed. So the battle was going on. And finally, we come to the last day of the battle, which is day number 10, where Ravana, of course, I'm skipping over a lot of the details, but of course, I should mention that one time Ravana's brother, Kubukarna, came out of his sleeping curse and fought. And he was also killed by Ram. But Lakshman apparently was injured by the javelin thrown by Indrajit. And that injured, that javelin knocked him unconscious. So it appears that Lakshman may, may be leaving the scene, but one Kaviraj, he came and said there is a particular herb that needs to be brought and then that herb will be the remedy for reviving Lakshman, but it's only found in the Himalayas. So who could go from the shore of Rameshwaram, which is on the bottom of India, all the way to the Himalayas, which were thousands of miles away. There was only one person that was Sri Hanuman Dev. And so Hanuman took it as his determined mission and he flew, he had the power to fly all the way to the Himalayas. And when he got to the mountain where the herb was, all the herbs became frightened when they saw this person and they all went into the ground. But Hamanum was not deterred. So rather than trying to find the herb, he simply took the whole mountain and carried that mountain all the way back. There's a place halfway between, uh, halfway on Hanuman's journey. It's called, um, it's called, let's see. 
It's in Maharashtra. I'm trying to think of the name. Uh, Satara. It's in a place called Satara. Satara means seven hills. And uh, one of those hills, when Hanuman was flying over, the top part of the mountain where he wa was carrying broke off and fell in that area, and that became one of the hills, which is the biggest hill there. And uh, even today, they say that the I saw that hill. It's interesting. It looks quite mystical. Um, the the Kabirajas who live in that area today say this is where they go to find any kind of additional herbs that are needed. That mountain has everything. So finally, Hanuman came back, and then uh, the uh, Kabiraj found the herb and prepared the, the medicine and gave it to Lakshman and Lakshman was brought back to life. So that was uh, apparently a defeat on the part of Ram and Lakshman. They seemed like they were, but that didn't dissuade them. Um, the Lord can never be defeated. And a lot of times he, he acts like he's defeated in order to perform his pastime of a human being. So the battle continued and finally, now when Ram and Lakshman and Sita were staying in Chitrakoot, one great sage they met their name is Augusta Muni. Augusta Muni was practically one of the most powerful of all of the sages ever. In fact, he was so powerful, he dried up the ocean in order to kill a whole series of demons who took shelter of, in the ocean. So he was very powerful. He didn't kill the demons, but because uh, Brahmins don't fight. It's the Kshatriyas that fight. But he, he helped by drying up that ocean by his power. So Gusta Muni was super powerful. He's probably one of the, or if not the most powerful sage. So he had a particular weapon. Prabhupada calls it a Brahmastra, but actually it was in the form of an arrow. And he gave that arrow to Ram. He said, Ram, use this only when you absolutely need it. <laughs> and so Ram kept it in his quiver as a special arrow. And during the final battle between Ram and, and Ravana, when Ravana's army was being routed, all of his soldiers, all of his generals were being killed. Finally, Ravana came out himself in order to fight and there's an in, and there's a very nice description of the battle between ram and ravana and in that battle ram is shooting his arrows and cutting off the heads because we know that ravana had 10 heads and those heads were falling but each time a head would fall another head would grow back in its place. So, um, it's interesting because how Ravana was killed, Ravana could not be killed because he had his brother, whose name was Mahi Ravana. He was also a great mystiker, he was a sorcerer. He was keeping his brother alive by this mystical potency. And it's it's described in other parts of more like supplementary literature to the Ramayan, how the Lord had to not only kill Ravana, but he had to destroy Mahi Ravana, who was keeping, keeping his brother alive with this elixir of immortality. It's an interesting, I don't have all the details. I do have the scripture, but it's sitting in my, sitting in my library in Croatia. 
So the fight goes on. And now Vibhishan's there, he's watching the fight. And um, he can understand that Ravana cannot be killed in the way that the Lord was fighting. So he told him, he said, he has an unlimited reservoir of immortality within his heart. The only way you can destroy him is you have to kill him by piercing his heart. The Lord took that to heart and then he put that famous arrow that was given to him by Augusta Muni. As soon as he took it out of the quiver, the, the arrow was blazing like the sun. It was so effulgent that no one could even look at it. <laughs> he placed it onto his bow. And as soon as he did, the entire universe was illuminated with bright light. He pulled back his bow. And when he did, the entire universe shook by the power of the Lord pulling back his bow. That arrow was so effulgent and so it had feathers on it, and it was decorated with all kinds of jewelry and various types of ornaments. It looked more like a javelin than an arrow. And the Lord pulled it back. Everyone was holding their breath. Actually, some people were just falling down unconscious just by the arrow being exhibited. And then the Lord very carefully, with great aim, he fired that arrow and that arrow went blazing like a comet through the sky and landing right in the heart of Robin. It went through his body, through his heart, out the other side, went into the earth, came out of the earth, went around the earth and then came back into the quiver of Sri Ram. And Ravana was finished. Jai Sri Ram. Everyone was chanting Jai Sri Ram. The monkey soldiers were flipping in the air and happy. The Rakshasas were crying. Oh no, what has happened? What has happened? Alas, alas, alas. And they were running in different directions in fear and confusion. And the monkeys decided to chase after him and kill a few more. So this, and now Ravana laid in a pool of blood and he was finished. No one could believe that the, the Ravana could actually be killed. Mandodari, along with all the other queens, Mandodari, the main queen of Ravana came out and she was lamenting the loss of her, her husband. And she started to speak to him in a very instructive way. His body was laying there. She said, just see, because you, you are not satisfied and you had to steal the wife of another man, this is, this is, the, this is your fate. And of course, she was beating her chest in uh, anguish, losing her dear husband. I mean, Ravana was, he had all a materially good qualities. He was powerful, mystical, rich, handsome. He had all these things, intelligent. His father was Vishrava, who was a Brahmana. And so he actually, Ramana even knew the Vedas. <laughs> but now he was finished because he had tried to take the consort of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the goddess of fortune herself, Srimati Siti Devi. And because of that, him and his entire empire was completely vanquished. Bibishan, 
he also lamented the loss of his brother. It's interesting. He loved his brother, although he was a devotee and he was, he never agreed with his brother, but he was always giving his brother advice, which of course Ravana never took. But he was also lamenting the loss of his brother along with the queens. And now Ravana had been killed and Sita was returned to Ram. And there's a long story that happens after her return to him after, after this great ordeal. So, um, so today is the day we celebrate good over evil. We pray mm, to Sri Ramchandra and to all the forces of goodness in the universe. And by their mercy, then gradually the world will become once again, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has predicted, it will again be an era of Satya Yuga, which will appear in Kali Yuga for 10,000 years. And so that is the prophecy. It's that prophetic statement is made by the Supreme Lord himself. So that will come, but in the meantime, we are dealing with the demons <laughs> who are everywhere. And so we should very carefully understand that as Srila Prabhupada said, he was talking to us. He said, we have no fear of Maya. Maya is actually our friend, he said. But because there are demons, Maya has to serve the demons. And therefore, the demons are the thorn in the side of all good people in the world. If we want to understand why there are so many problems, it's because of the demons. <laughs> uh, they act in different ways just to harass everyone. <laughs> When people become inflicted, infected by demoniac qualities, and they act in the same way. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come. We glorify Sri Ramchandra as the personality who teaches us righteousness, true religious principles, compassion, fraternity, and ideal leadership. People sometimes say, we want Ram Raj. <laughs> of course, Ram Raj is that, that leadership, which is righteous, where all the citizens, those who are being controlled by the leader, flourish in all aspects of life. So that will come in due course of time right now we are here in a very historical time where by Srila Prabhupada's presence, he's brought Ram, he's brought Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's brought Lord Nishringadev to the material world so we could worship them and bring about an era of righteousness, of goodness in the world. And each of us can make a difference as we become Krishna conscious and we inspire others to follow the process of bhakti yoga. So I'll stop there. I have to apologize. I'm not able to speak so much today, but if you have some questions, we will make some efforts to answer the questions. Please feel free to ask questions.
Thank you. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept our humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. And uh, happy Dasara to you, Guru Maharaj, and to everyone. Thank you for this absolutely riveting recount of the battle between Lord Ram and Ravan and all the events that happened and Hanuman's feats and how ultimately Ravan was defeated. And uh, I'm also thinking about Srila Prabhupada coming to the Western world and giving us the, the right way to worship the Lord and to bring back righteousness. I'm just a little puzzled though by something you just said before ending the class. Srila Prabhupada said, we have no fear of Maya, but because of demons and Maya having to serve the demons, there are so many problems. Why is Maya having to serve demons and how is she serving them? Yeah, she's a personification of the material energy, and they worship the, the material energy. She, she provides, she fulfills their desires. <laughs> that's her, what they call, that's what they call her, uh, her uh, shameless task, shameful task, you might say. Maya is the external energy personified. And she's, she is the external energy personified the three modes of material nature. And then there is the modes of passion and ignorance, which, which the demons collect, connect to them, the modes of passion and ignorance through lust, anger, greed, pride, illusion, anger, envy. So because they are serving the material energy, she's giving them the results of their activities. So it seems that she's favoring them and giving them yeah. up. Yeah, if you read the Bhagavatam, she does because that's her service. If you... Yeah, and so you, you, it's the modes of material nature that are prominent. And when people act in uh, according to the lower modes, those modes become prominent, just like the mode of passion and ignorance right now is the more prominent mode in the world because people are living according to those principles of those two modes. If you want the actual verse, and Jiva Goswami actually comments on this particular verse. It's uh, seventh canto, first chapter, verse number eight. Maybe uh, such Obama could put up the verse. Seven one eight. Uh, I won't be able to read it. Maybe someone else can read. And you'll see this is a clear answer to your question. Uh, Shimati, can you take over? I think uh, she can't do it. That's good question. <laughs> Somehow, Veda base is not opening, Guru Maharaj. Oh yeah, yeah. Even down here, our Veda base is down. I think everywhere. If someone has the Bhagavatam, they can read from it. Seventh Canto. Uh, I'm able to access Guru Maharaj. Would you like me to read? Yeah, go ahead. Bring it up. Seven one eight. The title of the chapter is "The Supreme Lord is Equal to Everyone," and uh, I'm scrolling to find verse eight. Yes. When read. The I'm sorry? Read. When the quality of goodness is prominent, the sages and the demigods flourish with the help of that quality. 
with which they are infused and surcharged by the Supreme Lord. Similarly, when the mode of passion is prominent, the demons flourish. And when ignorance is prominent, the yakshas and rakshashas flourish. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is present in everyone's heart, fostering the reactions of Sattva Gun, Radha Gun, and Tamma Gun. Report. Uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is... Guru Maharaj, if uh, Srimanti can give me screen share, everyone can read with me. I can do screen share. Yes, I, did, uh, I gave permission, Maharaj, please. Okay, then I can do screen share, so... Is it come up? Yeah. Yes, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is not partial to anyone. The conditioned soul is under the influence of the various modes of material nature. And behind material nature is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But once victory and loss under the influence of Sattvagun, Rajagun, and Tamagun are reactions of these modes, not of the Supreme Lord's partiality. Srila Jiva Goswami in the Bhagavad Sandarbha has clearly said, according to the statement, Guru Maharaj, should I read the Sanskrit or just the English? English. According to the statement of the Bhagavad Sandarbha, the Supreme Lord, being always transcendental to the material qualities, is never affected by the influence of these qualities. This same characteristic is also present in the living being. But because he is conditioned by material nature, even the pleasure potency of the Lord is manifested in the conditioned soul as troublesome. In the material world, the pleasure enjoyed by the conditioned soul is followed by many painful conditions. For instance, we have seen that in the two great wars, which were conducted by the Rajagun and Tamagun, both parties were actually ruined. The German, people, <laughs> the German people declared war against the English to ruin them, but the result was that both parties were ruined. Although the allies were apparently victorious, at least on paper, actually neither of them were victorious. Therefore, it should be concluded that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is not partial to anyone. Everyone works under the influence of various modes of material nature, and when the various modes are prominent, the demigods or demons appear victorious under the influence of these modes. Read that, read that sentence again, and you, then you'll get the answer to your question. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Everyone, Everyone works under the influence of various modes of material nature. And when the various modes are prominent, the demigods or demons appear victorious under the influence of these modes. Okay, that's the answer to your question. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. This is, is very... It, is it clear now? Absolutely very clear because we have the modes of Rajagun and Tamagun so prominent, it is favoring the demons and this is their time now. Yeah, and the Lord is neutral. Hmm. But he gives protection to the devotees though at the same time. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. You can stop share, um, Shri Devi Mataji. Oh, yes, sorry. Okay. Devotees, if you have any other questions, comments, realizations, please you can unmute yourself and ask. I can't hear what's being said. <laughs> there is no questions being asked, Guru Maharaj, so far. Okay. May I ask one more, if you don't mind, Guru Maharaj? Yeah. So, Guru Maharaj, I'm just thinking right now, we are reading through this uh, pastime of the churning of the milk ocean, the demons and the demigods, and how the Lord actually asked the demigods to make a truce with the demons so that they could ultimately get the nectar. 
So during these difficult times that we are having, can we somehow work with the present structure of, of demons to outwit them ultimately to get to spread Lord Chaitanya's mission by making some kind of truce with them or that's no good? Well, the Lord did that. <laughs> right, right. And he also foiled them at the end. Mm -hmm. He tricked them. And so that's, I don't think that's possible. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. But Krishna is using the demons to purify the world. By giving, yeah. How, how is that happening, Guru Maharaj? That, that yeah, people are sinful, and they have to get their reactions. So those reactions come by way of material energy, and the demons are an instrument that the the Lord uses to punish others for their sinful activity. People have to realize that everyone's accountable for their activities and punishment and reward come accordingly. So the way allows them to flourish because of the particular modes that are prominent now, they also get the reaction for their sinful deeds. Yeah. Yeah, because... Uh, the modes of passion and ignorance are simply sinful and degrading. The idea is to bring the world up to the mode of goodness, and then from there, bring people to transcendence. When people are in goodness, they're pious. When they're impious, they think of the welfare of others. Yeah, it's, yeah, we now we. Krishna consciousness is trying to bring people's consciousness away from the lower modes up to the higher modes, higher mode of goodness. That's the idea. But it doesn't seem as though the demons are getting any reactions right now. They seem to be having full control and thriving and flourishing. They'll get their reactions and they also are getting their reactions, but Everyone will get, the, no one can flaunt the material energy. It's not possible. The only way you can get out of the material energy is become Krishna conscious. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for clarifying so many points. Okay, thank you. Have a wonderful um, Vijay Dasani. Uh, those of you who live in London, I think in the evening time, which is practically right around now, soon there will be a festival at Bhaktivedanta Manor. Check it out and see if I'm correct. And there will be the effigy of Ravana presented and killed in a very ceremonious way with drama and, and uh, great uh, costumes also. So. And maybe those of you who are not there, they can see if it, there's a live stream from that. There might be. Okay, thank you. My basins to everyone. I'm sorry, I have to go tomorrow at 7.20 my time and at... Um, UK time 1220 yes, is uh, the Charlotte program. So. Yes, good match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. My obeisance to everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, everyone. Hare Krishna.